You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. The AfterBuzz After Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Deception After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Deception After Show. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, After Buzzers. Bing is for doing what we're doing, NBC's Deception, Season 1, Episode 6. Don't be a dummy. It's the name of this episode. I'm your host, Thaddeus Massey. And joining me this lovely, aquacious evening, that's not a word, is to the left of me. Hey guys, it's me, Amber J. What up, what up? I am Megan Thomas. And I'm Dan. Ah. I can't hear. Bam, you can't hear? Uh, it's Bam Erickson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear, but Bam Erickson is here joining us in the studio as well. We're going to jump right into this episode like we usually do because it looks like Deception is getting juicier and juicier, as my grandma and Mike used to say when they watch, used to watch the stories when I was a little kid. Mm, that story's getting juicy. It is. Mm -hmm, that's my story. Mm -hmm. It's getting on that level where you're like, okay, I'm really getting involved yes. and emotionally invested in this thing. So, starting the episode off... Joanna confronts Sophia and Robert. There's drama. I mean, the drama is thickening. At the dinner table. I mean, Sophia threatens to kill Joanna because she's dropping dimes on family business. Right, through the cup. And then this family snitches get stitches. It snitches get stitches. Don't forget that, but that's, that's a hood term, too. You know, snitches get stitches. You know what I'm saying? But not in real life. We want you to tell in real life. Right. Yes. Please call Crime Stoppers. Mm -hmm. In quotes. I want you to tell. In quotes. <laughs> so, Joanna confronts Robert and Sophia with Julian present, and she figures it out right there on the spot. So, what do you think this means for Sophia? Because Sophia's oh, interest. Back up, back up. What did she figure out? She figured that it was. She figured that the father of Mia is from uh, Senate. Um, Governor Haverstock. Senator, Senator, Haverstock. Senator Haverstock. Senator Haverstock. And, and okay, dad. Everyone, it's Mia's daddy. Let's give kudos to Megan because she called it last I week. I did. Megan I should have asked her it. money. She you got me glad I'm week. not a gambler. Because if I did. It's getting hectic I over know, there. right? I should have fingers <laughs> pointing and everything. <laughs> so, I, did, I knew. <laughs> I told you Haverstock is the dad. I just Hover felt it in my bones. That is very scandalous. Only that Megan. Is, that's super like. Ooh, janky. Like, what are you doing <laughs> sleeping with a 16-year-old? But we'll get into that in a minute. Only go ahead, Bam. twisted mind. Bam was, I know, right? <laughs> Bam, and, Bam, and, Bam, go ahead. And you're right, Megan. You were right about it. And now that we see tonight, uh, last night's episode, it totally makes sense why he was around, why there were secrets and certain things we couldn't figure out. Right. So it makes sense, but it didn't make sense. So we couldn't figure it out before, except, of course, for you. But yeah, it was that was a great reveal last and, night. And we've also like f discovered or, or found out why he hasn't taken more action against this guy, mm -hmm. uh, based on what he has holding over Edward's head, which we'll talk about in a minute. But going back to Joanna, which can I say that I said that he was Amber. a killer? I told y'all he was a killer like three weeks ago. I don't think he. I still well, don't think different. he killed that's Kimberly different. Yeager. I think he was set up. Oh, so his fingerprints in the golf club yes. are not enough for you people. He but, you know, they, he could have got his fingerprints on that golf club any kind well, of way. Were you playing golf and it. having sex? No, he killed her. But no, he, but well, I mean, he, he could. No, I think they planted it because <laughs> if you remember in the flashback, if you remember, he, like, woke up out of this daze and he looks around and he's bloody and he looks outside and you see Kimberly Yeager's dead. So I think somebody must have drugged him and then probably, like, took his hand and grabbed it around the, the golf club and they killed the girl. Very or, possible. Or what he could have done is when he woke up and saw what happened, not thinking, he probably ran over, touched her, touched the evidence without thinking, like, that 
this could it, that the prince will be eventually on it, but I think that will be revealed probably that, for the finale. That will now. be revealed. I don't buy yeah. it. <laughs> and I you know what? Her. They're probably gonna show where. I think Julian might have had some. He did pick. He, he did pick up the golf club. Yeah. And that's the one thing that they always do on television shows, and I don't know why they always do this, where people are trying to figure out what's going on and they start touching stuff, like. Why do people do that? Because you're nervous. It's annoying. You don't remember. So I'm going to pick it up and touch some stuff, and you see blood. They always do that on TV shows. I think they need to stop doing that. Not saying that they've done that this episode, but I have a feeling, I hope that the writers have made somebody drug him, and it was obvious he was out of it. So he was drugged, and then they actually put his hands on the weapon as opposed to him licking and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's a whole well, other thing. Let's but, let's continue with right, let's the do, reveal of right. Haverstock is now the father. Is, yeah. is right. So Haverstock is the daddy. Julian is livid. He's right, pissed. Rightly so. Right, as, as he should. And Sophia has obviously more motivation <laughs> to keep this quiet. hidden, quiet, than just obviously it being scandalous. She likes to think of Mia as her own daughter, which... Is delusional because she's right, not. Because she's not. I mean, but hold on. There's a lot of people that, you know, grandparents that take in their kids. But she doesn't have her it, own kids at all. She's not blood so? related to any of What's these the people. Point? That's adoption. No, Sophia is more like, that's my daughter. Don't you think that she loves me? Like, it's almost like borderline crazy, but I don't think that Sophia went as crazy because of that. Like, I think she just wanted... Sometimes you just don't want your secrets out. Like, I right. mean, your best friend had sex with your daughter and then had your other daughter. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of messed up. Like, that's really twisted. It is, but I think she really, like she says to Joanna, I think she really did fall in love with Mia being her daughter. Because she said she just, you know... I mean, she raised her. Okay, we get that. Saying, but so like, she's her think, mom. But I just think that she wants the secret to stay the secret because mm -hmm. it's... Messed up. Like, well, the, the, like, and, I don't well, care. Well, yeah. It's not only it's not only that. It's the fact that, say Vivian, it, they've gotten into this mode of it being a secret. So say Vivian, they come out and it's like, okay, her and Vivian didn't have a good relationship, right? True. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Vivian and Mia had a good relationship. So once it comes out that she's her mother, Vivian is Mia's mother, and M Vivian is still alive, then she might start looking at Sophia differently. Mm -hmm. As a pole, you know, it's, it, it could probably potentially put a strain on that relationship. And obviously, and, and Sophia was probably scared of that happening. Yeah, and obviously it did. And because the fact that this has been kept a secret for 16 years, how would anybody respond after they found out something for 16 years? So Sophia has the right, I feel, Amber, to to react the way that she is acting because exactly. it's it's. It was a secret. It was something that was never supposed to be told exactly. or to be revealed. So I see why she's that way. But what did you guys think about how how Joanna's character or, or John's character was able to the flashbacks worked into the favor. She was able to put to um, the whole lighter thing together as far right. as the yeah. age, him using the lighter, and then it was kind of one of those things where uh, kids do certain things that our pattern from the parents. You, you mm -hmm. said I can't remember the, the the correct term, but but um, someone was else was using the the, the, the lighter. lighter. Yeah, and she was able to figure it out. Um, Do you guys know what I'm talking I about? Think, well, yeah, it was Haverstock was using the lighter. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think that that oh, flashback. Oh, it, it's the flashback. She saw what she saw. Uh, uh, Vivian using the lighter, mm -hmm. and she said he likes to do this thing with the lighter, blah blah blah. She just yeah, made like, an association. It's his trademark mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. But then Haverstock had the lighter, you know. He was, and he was, yeah, he, he was like doing lit the cigarette for one of the young uh, yeah. debutante girls, and for her to put that together and be like, oh, it's Haverstock. Yeah, it I was think that unrealistic. Was a, that was a little that, much. That was very to me. unrealistic. That I mean, was what only I was because getting to was, yeah. Like sometimes, like the show, it skips steps. So it was like that was one of those times where it skipped a lot of steps. It's like you you got all of that from a, a cigarette, like yeah, and that's a heavy accusation yeah. to be like it's Haverstock. Yeah, but then, you know, <laughs> like off of the lighter, I know it's him. Yeah, because Not you know much. Julian was like, oh, you know, she dated Cameron, she dated Todd, you know, she's just naming off names, and then she's like, it was your best friend, you know, it's like. You skip some steps, guys. Like, I mean, yeah. I get it. They only have 60 minutes to put all this together. And, 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 and presumably eight weeks. So they're trying to put stuff together as soon as possible to keep us in. Yeah, but at the same time, you got to think that I, it apparently what, what was, was being inferred that it was a special kind of way that she was playing with the lighter. And she said about the, talked about the guy 
that she was having this thing with, and she remembered the only other person that messed with his lighter the same kind of way. Right. Was Haverstock. I don't think it was the fact that he had a lighter because a lot of people have lighters. I, I mean, think she it was, is the detective. I think it was the way that he fiddled with it, and mm-hmm. she's in this this very sensitive situation where she's paying attention to every little detail, mm-hmm. every little thing. So, it was more believable than the spaghetti four. Her getting the passcode <laughs> on the computer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a weeks ago. That, yeah, that, yeah, that, that was, was <laughs> that was more believable <laughs> to me than that. Mm-hmm. True. So I can ride with that. If they can go with spaghetti four in about a matter of two seconds, yeah. breaking into a computer, I can roll with her figuring yeah. it out and putting together tails because everybody has a tail. Yeah. You know, so that was one of them. But okay. you know what was crazy though with Sophia? Like Sophia's anger was heightened, and I was like, "Oh, Joanna, you better watch out because we know what happens when Sophia gets mad." Right. And she took that glass and she threw it against that wall. I mean, Joanna. But they didn't had no even fear. seem phase. Yeah, she like her and Julian were just sitting there chilling. Like, yeah. She threw the glass. I mean, they jumped and then she just kept talking. And I was just kind of like, it was a very intense situation. Live, yeah. You live in their house. Like, I feel like she kind of really did like overstep her boundary there because it's like yeah she kept pushing it yeah but she was mad though like that's my best friend and how dare you guys let him how dare you let Haverstock your best friend get away with fathering a child with your daughter and this man is not behind bars I think that's what was making her so mad to the point where Joanna didn't care that get mad if you want to look what happened look what you guys covered up that's true I mean I guess it's a, a, a bad cover up I mean I just don't know like do you believe that like Haverstock was in love with her like, how do you guys feel about I that? Don't, I don't know. know. That's kind of weird. I mean, he was like 40. I what think it's disgusting, mean? personally, that he... <laughs> Isn't your girlfriend like 16, though? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> mm, funny. No, just kidding. Wow. If she was, I'd be 17. But that so anyway, joke. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's like gross. And the fact that he's referring to her as a woman is like... Yeah, at 16, I was absolutely... He's so like, the woman that I loved. It's like, dude, what... And this is a senator? Like, are you serious? But she kind of felt like she loved, like, she, when she talked about him, she spoke of him, like, very endearingly. You know, she was like, we have intellectual conversations. <clears throat> and obviously she saw him a lot because Joanna was like, you know, I cover for you, you got to give me the details. And it was like, oh. Well, Robert did mention to Edward that, look, he got her drunk, he gave her pills, and I don't know if she did it to piss Robert off or what the context or the tone of that conversation was, but... Haverstock. I don't think she did it to piss him off because she was like, "I screwed. Mm-hmm. Let's go to bed." And then like her makeup was all right. Weird. And as and as as Robert's telling the story to uh, to Edwards, Julian goes and confronts Haverstock, and Haverstock is saying it's not it's what uh, what you think is the the truth is not really the truth. Yeah. So there was there was. Um, both of the scenes was going on at the same time. Now, Haversack didn't quite ex- say exactly what happened, but he was basically saying what Robert was saying to Julian is not all what's true. So, well, so basically, he's not a rapist, is what he's trying to say. Yeah, right. He's I, for him. I think he's trying to say there was a real relationship there, mm-hmm. as sick as that was, because statutory rape is never okay in any mm-hmm. situation. Yeah. Um, but I even th- if she was 18 and he's 40 something, that's still like. I Dude, mean, that's what are you gross, doing? but at least that's so legal. Like, at least it's legal. I mean, I'm not saying me. that it's okay, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I mean, uh, like, yeah, what are you Moore doing? Like, dated Ashton Kutcher, that but wasn't But he wasn't gross. a 16-year-old. But let's say he yeah, was, he was 16. A grown they man. were still 20 years... They still have a big okay, age gap. Okay, but the point is, this is an underage He's minor. just like, it's so gross. It's not that gross. Like, people do it every day. Well, it's unacceptable. She's a baby. Okay. Okay. It's not gross. She's a baby. So, gross. Th- well, the point for this is, you know, he have her st- I could say that there was a real, real relationship here, mm-hmm. and during this conversation that um, Julian has with Haverstock, he mentions to them, well, during the same time that your sister got pregnant, and was, you know, shipped off to pregnant camp, <laughs> basically. Um, that's when pregnant you're. Camp. That's, I know we're gonna get comments on that. Pregnant, pregnant camp. camp. <laughs> that's when your. That's when your brother was accused of killing Kimberly Yeager. Oh, by the way, he really did kill Kimberly Yeager, according to Haverstock, because right. Haverstock has the evidence, which is a golf club that has both um, Edward's fingerprints and Kimberly Yeager's blood on it. Right. So he said he basically kept the golf club as insurance that Robert wouldn't go. You know put him behind bars for having relations with his underage daughter. Smart. But did you guys catch the part where he said, what 
because I feel like Julian has something to do with that murder because it's now revealed that Julian was at that party too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, Kim Brody Hager. And it's like... When, when, when Julian uh, said to his brother Edward that he was going to actually go and confront Haverstock, yeah. he says... He says, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna go confront him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna lose my temper and see what happens." I was like, "Corny." Well, I think that's, he, here's I think the thing. I liked it. I mean, he was so like, he, that's his sister. Like, you know, he's, yeah. He's like, I'm about to go. I'm gonna dude. go confront Thaddeus about what he says. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna lose my temper and I'm gonna see what happens. If you said that, well, well they can't say well, the F word and the S word and all that crap on TV. Here's the so. thing. Here's <laughs> like the, the thing. most you can do. You're dealing with a billion dollar family who are in high end society. Yeah. You know, the only person that really puts in work is Rayburn. Okay. <laughs> right. Ooh, he, I'm gonna lose he's, my temper. He's like, the he, he's the one that puts in that does the dirt. Mm-hmm. These yeah. other guys, they're not gangsters or whatever. Even Edward was like, this guy's a U.S. senator. Like, what do you think you're going to do? How do you think you're going to go about doing this? You know, mm-hmm. they're the kind of family that hires people to do stuff for them. Okay. They're not going to go beat this guy up. And it, it rings true because he's a doctor. And as doing anything tough, as a tough, he's a, you know, playboy. He's he's not a tough guy. Uh-huh. So for him to talk tough, yeah, it's it's believable that he will say something corny. But <laughs> he got mad and, and went to go do something. It was corny, but it's believable. I'm okay. going to go get mad and see. I'm just, you know, he just got to let off fumes. Yeah. He should have been more pissed after he found, you know, after Haverstock was talking about how his sister was a woman and, mm. you know, we had this thing. And he said, don't even try to turn this into some kind of love story. You know, he even mentioned, Wait, he even said that. He also said, I'll break your finger. Like, if you keep talking. Like, right. If you try you to know, turn this into a love story, I'll break yeah. your finger. Yeah. Like, that's kind of like. Gross. <laughs> I'll okay. break your finger. Like. Can you hit, can you threaten me with more than a broken finger? Like, you know. I'm just okay, saying. well, I'll, I'll leave it alone. And <laughs> <laughs> it was corny. I agree with you, Bam. It, I, I believe it was corny, but it still rings true to his character because I think he's kind of corny. It's Julian. Gotcha. And, yeah, and I think at that point, that's when, you know, during the same time that Julian's having this conversation with Haverstock, <laughs> Edward's also having a conversation with his father. Right. And Robert reveals basically the same thing that Haverstock is revealing to Julian. And I feel really bad for, Ro- for excuse me, Edward now because he finds out, like, oh, I must have definitely killed that girl because my prints were on the golf club. I killed the girl. Right. So he's having this whole issue within himself, and he's just like, I killed her. And, and his dad, he's like, why would you let me get away with that? Because it cost Vivian her life, basically. Yeah. All this chain of events, is, that's why she's dead. And he storms out of there. He's like, you know, nobody deserves to get away with murder. So he's basically telling his dad, you shouldn't have let me get away with that. You should have let me go to jail. And he's feeling a lot of guilt for that. I'm telling you, I don't think he killed the girl. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I mean, he's not going to be able to... Robert doesn't know whether or not nobody really knows Mm -hmm. what happened to Kimberly Yeager. The only thing that Robert knows is that his his son's fingerprints are on this golf club, which is the murder weapon, which is all that matters in a court of law. If they can prove that somebody did it, it would be Edward, whether or not he did it or not. I think Robert's lying. I think he knows, and I think I think I think Robert knows, and I think Haverstock knows. I think Haverstock knows. I don't think Robert knows, but Haverstock knows. Mm-hmm. But he has that piece of evidence. He needed some insurance, mm-hmm. just like he said. He yeah. needed something to protect him because of this situation with Vivian. And you know what? I honestly think that Haverstock killed that girl, or he had one of his guys kill the girl, because they probably were like, yo, we didn't got, you know, I got Vivian knocked up, and I need to make sure that they don't put me behind bars. Right. So since I'm the DA, let's follow him, see what happens. Oh, he's he's a drunk, and he's spending the night with this chick. Mm-hmm. Let's get him, like, super filthy drunk, drug him somehow. We'll kill the girl, blame it on him. Here's my insurance. Perfect. I take that back. Robert doesn't know, because if Robert did know, then there would be no, no point. No, there'd be no yeah. cover-up. Yeah. yeah. Right. I just, like you said, I do feel very bad for Edward at this point, because it like, we all, we see him as this angry, raging man, like, which there's no excuse to hit your wife or whatever he did with Samantha, you know, but we see him in a different light this episode, like, even more than last episode, because it's like, he's just opening up and he's, you know, I feel like he's now going to be on, like, Will's side, you know? Like, I feel like he's going to call Will and be like, okay, I'm going to help, because he, you know, he even tells his wife, like, go to California, take the kids, because I'm going to figure out what happened, like, because now he's like, 
it involves me. Not only is it my sister, but you know now I really want to know. So like I think it is definitely gonna put him into a more, I guess, more, more dimensional character. You know, I think that's kind of cool. And I'm glad you brought that up, Amber, because that's the thing I was thinking about was this is kind of a, a pivotal change for Edward and how we see Edward's character. It seems as if Edward has been kind of caught in the middle of a lot of he made one mistake as a kid whether he did it ki killed Kimberly Yeager or not which we I don't still I still don't think he killed Kimberly Yeager like you Megan I think that something else was going on that was me was that you that thought, I thought that he did. I mean I still think he killed her okay no, Amber, sorry. you think he killed her you no, don't. I don't think he did he so Megan's the one don't. that don't I th don't think right that. that's what I'm saying so I, you guys I agree are in a you guys agree on that I think I, I agree that he didn't kill her but it seems as if he has more redeeming qualities than a lot of the rest of the, the, the characters or the rest of his family. Now, the question I want to pose is, do you think he's doing the right thing by sending his family away? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Why do you think you think they should stay there during the midst of this craziness? Well, the thing is... They could get hurt. I think that it's good to send... I think it's good to send the wife and the kids away, but what he's doing, trying to make up for what has been revealed to him, I don't think is necessary. He's trying to now go after his dad, and he really is unaware of what's exactly going on. And Bob, his dad's not going to tell him. So I would just continue to just keep doing good, positive things into the world. Well, exactly. And, and here's the thing, and, and that was my point, Bam, because that was, my, that was part of the thinking that I brought for proposing that question was because it seemed as if he feels like he should pay for the murder if he really killed Kimberly Yeager. Mm -hmm. It seems he was kind of inferring that he killed he killed a girl and he should actually pay for it mm -hmm. as opposed to it seems more about him being a killer than finding out about Vivian's murder because oh. that was the main thing which is why he's on this I killed this girl you guys should well, go I away that's blah, why blah, blah. he's going so hard because he's like my sister died and that's part of rectifying the situation because he feels partly responsible um, for his sister dying because if you notice when he's talking to his father, he's basically like, you've covered this up, and because you covered this up, we are now having this issue with Haverstock, and because we're having an issue with Haverstock, my sister got killed some way or another. So he feels responsible, and I think that's the character of a good person who's like, I got to live my life, I got to get married, I got to raise my daughters, when I killed somebody and I should have never gotten that chance. Right. And that's noble. And Vivian didn't get that chance, I think that, like, you know how like Vivian's the party girl and like she has such a bad mm -hmm. reputation. Well, look what's happened to her. Like, of course, I mean, if I was raped and my father chose my brother over, like, I mean, I would feel a certain type of way about that. So of course, like, you know, she just dove into drugs and, you know, like that's why her life is like that. And like, like Megan just said, you know, he feels responsible for that. He feels like, you know, she died young. I got to have a family, a wife and kids. And like, look what my baby sister had to sacrifice because my father wanted to keep me out of jail. Well, two yes. things. Vivian's already dead. So now is he going to, because he's had this life, he's established a life with Samantha and, had, and he's had two daughters. Does he punish them? Now, now, no, all, now that's not going to bring away. Vivian back. He sends them away to keep them safe because yeah. you know these people don't play fair. Like they kill your kids and they kill your wife. Well, he can go to California. They can go to California, and the people of that caliber can still find them and bump yeah. them off. I mean, not so them going to California land. is not <laughs> not deception land. They can go to California, and that doesn't mean anything. But it also takes the distraction away. Like his daughter is just annoying. Like that, this, episode, I was like, what is she talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, make sure you guys go to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast so we can continue to talk about deception for you make sure you tell a friend make sure you rate us that's five stars give us five stars and comment and let us know what you guys like what you guys don't like about this podcast because we love hearing from you and tell your mom's friends and your, your granny's friends and everybody else to subscribe as well tell your moms and them you know what i'm saying tell your moms and them huh hmm Hmm? What is he talking about? I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Um, but now, wait, the sad part of this situation is poor little innocent Mia. Okay, can we talk about Mia in a minute? Because this situation with Edward is really, like, kind of annoying. What is annoying? We'll go back to it. Okay, let's go to Mia. <laughs> yes. So Mia, now, you know, we see the last episode, she runs off with her boyfriend, Kyle, and they go to her friend's, you know, vacay home mm -hmm. upstate. And she's really kind of trying to process the fact that her sister is her mom, you know. 
um, she goes through a, a little issue with stealing. We see that she wants to steal some wine, and her boyfriend's like, why? That's going to draw attention to us. Plus, you're it's worth like, a billion dollars. Yeah. And she's, and she's like, oh, I was just playing. And so then as she's walking out, wrong. yeah, she's walking out, and she <laughs> sees the tabloid is your sister, your mom. Like, that's so humiliating, and that's got to be hurtful to her. So she goes back, and she does steal the wine, and she walks out. Yeah, they right in front of the owner's face. And Which was care. just so, stop, stop. Where right. are you going? Get I was so gangster, though. Like, nobody shop lists like that. Like, you're not just going to walk out in front of the clerk. Like, that That takes a lot of balls. I give it. I, I give mean, her props for that. Yeah, people deal with grief in diff different ways. So I think that's her way. And it's also kind of like, my mom is this crazy party girl that does crazy stuff. So I'm like, my mom, I'm stealing this stuff. What you going to do? You think she's going to start taking on some of the traits of Vivian now that she feels like that's her mother as opposed to her sister like well she has one trait already she's sleeping with a guy who's over 18. <laughs> that's true well, he's, not, he's not over 40 though he's not over 40. Well, she has to start somewhere let's give her a chance this is still statutory rape that boy right. is that's in true. like 25 at least he's not 25. he's 21 he was at the bar 21 and 25 are but it doesn't years matter. Back. Twenty-one and eight. Twenty-one and sixteen. Why are you y'all having relations? Just give her a with chance. She's got to start with the twenty-somethings, and then she'll work her way up to the forty-somethings. Y'all don't want love to prosper out here. You guys are trying to break the law. I'm not trying to break anything. You guys are okay with the statutory? Rape. My grandparents got married when they were like fifteen. Y'all are really drunk. That's before statutory rape was even an issue. Right? <laughs> Somebody invented statutory rape. people got married when they were thirteen rape. and fifteen years old. Um, all I'm saying is. <laughs> I think, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and I think she already had some of Vivian's characteristics yeah. before we even found out that she was Vivian's daughter. And she's going to think about her and process her in a different light now that she knows that's her mother as opposed to just her sister, a sibling sure. and a parent, a to totally different the, dynamics of psyche. The boyfriend, when they were, um, when they were, I believe, in the closet trying on clothes or Kyle. something. Kyle. Mm Kyle. -hmm. He asked a couple questions that I thought made me kind of wonder about um, his motive. Mm -hmm. He asked, you know, what the first thing he said was, you know, do you think you should call home to let people know that you're there? I thought that was cool. But then he asked, like, who do you think is your father? And so I still have to go back and wonder, being when he was first introduced, you know, he had a conversation with someone where he looked like he was up to something. So you kind of have to wonder, based off that question, what is his motives? Is his goal now to try to get information? Is he a part of? The well, we know he's up to something yeah. from from a couple of episodes ago when he, you know, paid the guy off, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. we know he's up to something. It just hasn't been revealed yet. Um, but I just think I just think some of the questions that he asked helped go into kind of show more of what he's what he's about. What do you think is going on with Sophia? What is this? What is up with her? This um, guy Teo can I that she say, went to go see. That was the whole shenanigans with the ferret finding. <laughs> yet again, Joanna's getting caught up. She's right. She's blown, her cover is gonna get blown really soon because she keeps on yeah. messing up. And Will told her, "Don't go in there." And she just decided, "I'm going in." Do you think Sophia knew it was her going down the stairs, even though they didn't show that she saw her? She saw somebody's hand going down the stairs. Do think you think Sophia, Sophia knew? I think she saw her because that whole interchange at the end of the episode where. You know, Joanna comes home and Sophia's like, you know, I really loved her. That's my child. I, you know, thought about it. And when she when she kicks Joanna out of the house mm -hmm. during that conversation, I think that was brought on by something. But we know like Sophia as the type of character who's not gonna just throw all her cards out there. So she doesn't need to tell Joanna that she knows about her. Or maybe could it just be the blatant disrespect of, of putting her business out of the um that's what at, I the, think. at the table? Yeah. So it could, I think that's, it could, that's enough. Yeah, it could know? be yeah. it could be one or the other. But yeah. I mean, when she was looking down, we didn't see any of making tear fingers, and she so it would be far fetched. But knowing Sophia, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise no. me at all. Sophia is I have I become a new fan of her because yes. she is She's an amazing a great actress. actress. Mm -hmm. But I think she would have kept her in the house if she thought it was really her. Because, because you know, keep just, your enemies closer, and she's exactly. that kind of person. So she would exactly. want to, she would want to do that. Okay. I think she, I think just her organically figuring out this information made her want to kick her out the house. It's like, uh, I have some great information for all of you guys out there listening. Oh wow! So we at After Buzz TV, we are excited to announce the theatrical release of Adventures of Serial Buddies. This is a new hilarious uh, serial killer buddy comedy produced by After Buzz TV's founders and CEOs, uh, Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro. 
and the movie stars two bro girls, uh, Beth Bears, Artie Lane, Kathleen Gifford, Christopher Lloyd, Christopher McDonald, and Maria Menounos, and the voice of legendary actor Henry Winkler. Hey, I've fun. actually seen this movie. This movie is very hilarious. It's like Dexter meets Dumb and Dumber. And so The Adventures of Serial Buddies will open in select theaters on March 8th. So if you are in New York, if you are in uh, Los Angeles, Boston, Chicago, or San Francisco, you guys, make sure that you guys go get your tickets uh, before they sold out. You guys can watch the trailer. You guys can pre-order the movie, and you can get your tickets at SerialBuddies.com. Don't forget to also follow on Twitter at SerialBuddies and Maria Menudos on Twitter. And again, March 8th, Serial Buddies. March 8th, Serial Buddies. Cannot wait. Okay, so this episode was, uh, it was a lot of information going on. We got two episodes left. Yep. So they're gonna have to wrap this up. Two episodes. Let's go to before we go to predictions. Let's go to news and gossip, and then we'll get into predictions. Okay, I just have a little bit of news rating. and gossip. Just having technical news difficulties. and gossip. <laughs> just some technical difficulties. Okay. Having technical difficulties. It's okay. Oh, we don't need the intro. Okay. That was the intro right there. Um, Me and Bam. <laughs> basically, you know, the same thing. Um, it's actually growing in ratings this last episode. Excellent. It's up by like a tenth of a percent. Yay. So hopefully that nice. momentum will continue into next week. Nice. Um, you know, I didn't. There was nothing really in the news about Megan or, you know, Laz or any of the characters for that matter. But, you know, since the ratings are increasing, that's an awesome thing for NBC and for the show and for us and for everybody. So, you know, keep watching. Oh, you go, NBC. Yes. Um, do you have any news or gossip about Megan? No. Bam? I do not. Meg, you don't have the scoop? Not today, but I have a prediction, baby. Okay, so let's get into predictions for uh, the first season of uh, NBC's Deception for episode seven. We saw uh, for next week, uh, Megan, sorry, Megan, <laughs> I'm looking at Megan, saying Megan, meeting Joanna. Joanna, at the end of the episode, moves in this past episode. She moved in with Julian. So where do we think that's going to go? With her and Julian, and she's supposed to be going out of town. She called Will and said she's going to be going out of town. No, that's when she, they went to go out of town to get um, to, to, Mia, to get to pick Mia. Up Mia. Oh, that's right, that's right. So, what do you guys think is going to happen next episode? We got two episodes left. Yes. Predictions for episode seven, the second to last episode okay. of this introductory season. I will Meg say Scoop. that go. I believe that Haverstock killed the girl. That is my prediction. And I now that he has gotten Kyle, he's probably paying him off some way or another to infiltrate a relationship with Mia some way or another. Okay. Okay. Bam Erickson, episode seven. I don't think I, I don't think Haverstock killed. Um, I don't think he killed, but I think he, he knows something. I'm curious to, to find out about um, about the Ever character and the what character character? Edward. Oh the Edward character, okay. Well he just reveal to the world that he's the murderer and then maybe he really didn't. Like, I'm, I'm really torn with that. Um, I don't really have any predictions. I'm just kind of talking and rattling, so I'll just move on. <laughs> okay, episode seven. It's just, it's just really good, and I, don't, I can't figure out where things are going. That's a good thing. Okay, yeah. episode seven. Uh, Amber J, go, prediction. Um, to piggyback off of what Megan said, I think that Kyle and Haverstock are going to, you know, join forces and nothing good is going to come of that and I also think that Joanna's cover is going to get blown like they kind of allude to that in the previews and that journalist is pretty hardcore yes so I think that something someone's going to find out about Joanna and I think it's going to be someone in the Bowers family and I am curious just really quick how the girl calls to blow say you know that Joanna she arrested me in San Francisco and so I'm really curious to see where that's going to go okay that's interesting uh, for me I'm not really sure where. I'm trying to think strategically to keep the the show going. Is it going to be that easy for us to find out who killed Vivian before the next two episodes are done? I think it, they're going to have to do something incredibly creative to get us into season two. So I'm not sure. I really can't say where it's going to go. But I can say that I think... Joanna's relationship with Julian is going to get a little steamy now that she's moving Ooh. into the house with him. And it's going to be up. a problem mm -mm -mm. for her and Will. That is my prediction. Right. So. Until next time. Woo. 
to our next guy after buzzers, where uh, can we find you guys? You can find me on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Megan Thomas, and uh, my name on there is at Meg Scoop. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Bam Erickson, and you can also find me on TruePeoplesMedia.com. You can find me on Twitter at I'm Amber J, J A Y E. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Club Thaddeus, C-O-U-B-T-H-A-D-D-E-U-S. And you can find me here at 11 o'clock on Tuesdays doing CBS's Vegas with Bam Erickson. Until next time, guys. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.